great new phone, and I have absolutely no idea how to use the camera, other than just to point and shoot and take a simple picture. To use the camera, we must understand the camera. Ormond Beckles here, the High Tech Nomad, and welcome to another video. I always say, if you want to learn how to make technology work for you, and today's subject is actually, it's, it's a prime example of that. What we're going to take a look at is the Note 20 Ultra's camera and the three lenses, and we're going to look at how to set it so that we can take the absolute best picture that we possibly can. As I alluded earlier, in order to use the camera, we have to understand the camera. So we're going to break this video up, as I said, into two parts. And right now, we're going to focus on the basics of the camera, the lenses, what they do, and when to use them. Let's go over what each one is and what it can do. That will determine what the settings are. The top camera is a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. The middle camera is your bread and butter. This is a 108 megapixel camera. We can use it to record video, for example, 4K at 60 frames per second or 1080 at 60 frames per second, uh, up to 8K at 24 frames per second. It works with this laser focus module. It also has uh, image stabilization, which means when we move and it moves, it doesn't, it ends up, they cancel each other out. The bottom camera is the 12 megapixel 5X zoom periscope camera. This thing's actually in there sideways, which is why this camera bump is so big. It allows us to do five times zoom and a 10 times zoom that are actually optical as opposed to it trying to figure it out through software. Here we have a flash. And if you look really close, over here you'll see a small hole and that is the microphone for the back camera. That's gonna play into this so that when we're taking videos, instead of it traditionally trying to record from here, where you might even have your hand on it, it's going to actually record from over here. We're gonna get much better sound than we would have before. The main thing I want you to remember is this middle camera is the only camera that can do 60 frames per second. Let me give you an example. The three icons off to the right symbolize the three lenses. The lens we're on right now is the main lens, the one in the middle and the one up top. They're sort of actually upside down there. The one up top is actually the telephoto. You see it went right to five. The one down the bottom is our widescreen. All right, as you can see, I can choose between those. That 5X zoom is optical, meaning it's not done with software. It's gonna look nice and sharp. Let's go back to the middle lens, which is basically 1.0. I'm gonna go into options. I'm going to change from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, because I didn't want motion blur. We'll come back up. And I want you to notice, you don't see those icons anymore because you can't switch between those lenses. You are now have to use that middle lens. Now you can zoom in using this, but this is now being done through software. It's not gonna be as sharp and as clear. You can get away with it, but I want you to understand how the camera works. We're gonna take a look at the icons to the left here. We're gonna skip the first two, I'll get back to those. The, the one that we wanna look at right now is what the dimensions, what the layout, what you, whatever you wanna call it, of how it's going to actually take your picture and the video. Let's stick with pictures for right now. We have a choice of full one by one, 16 by nine, four by three, and four by three, 108 MP, which is for the 108 megapixels. What does that mean? Well, the one by one is fine if you're doing something for Instagram. It is as you would think. It's one of whatever wide by one of whatever high. Just think of it that way. It's a square. It will take a picture in a square. If you need a square picture, that's what you want to set it to. The next one is, is actually the four by three. It's four one way by three the other. 
Again, okay, nothing special. You might use that. I don't know, send a picture. You're going to take a postcard picture. The two that we want to really look at is the 16 by 9 in the full. A lot of people don't understand the difference between them. The full takes up the full screen on your phone. And it's great if you're showing the picture on your phone. If, however, you take a picture in full and you show it on a normal television screen or monitor, that is going to have a different dimension. And this is what you're going to get. So you're going to end up with black bars. And that's because the dimensions are different. It'll look great on the phone. Not going to look so hot. Well, it'll look stylized. It'll look different on your screen or your monitor. So if you're taking something and you're going to be showing it on your phone all the time, that's where you're mostly going to look at it. Then you can go with full. Most people, however, are going to want to set it to 16 by 9. The 16 by 9, that fits your television screens, your graphics program. However, if you take a picture in 16 by 9 and you look at it on your phone, you're going to get this. So you get black bars, different black bars, but you get black bars. So if you're going to be consuming it on your phone, you can leave it in full. But if you're using it for anything else, you should leave it in the 16 by nine, or you're gonna end up with these stylized black bars. Let's go in now to the settings, shot suggestion. Again, another AI to try and help you out. Let's go ahead and try that out. And the way that that works is that when you try to take a picture, you'll see that blinking dot and it will blink and then it will show you a solid dot. And all you're supposed to do is line up those two until you get the yellow and take your picture. You now know how to pick the correct aspect ratio for the project that you're working on, and you know how to get a little help in framing the shot so that you get the very best picture or the very best video. Still to come in the next video, we're going to go over the rest of the settings, but they really build on top of what you've just learned. So I want to give you a few, a few hours, a couple of days, hopefully no more than that, to let that sink in and start to take some pictures using this new information that you have. Everything else is going to build on top of that and just get better and better. If you had an aha moment, which hopefully you did, please leave a comment below. Say, hey, you know what? I didn't realize about the aspect ratio or I didn't realize that's how the uh, shot suggestions work. Let us know. Again, we need your feedback to help mold this. But I do have a lot more stuff to cover, so please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to hit the like button. And until the next time, this is Ormond Beckles, a.k.a. the High Tech Nomad, signing out.